Roger the Yellow Smoke. December 1966. As America's involvement in the war in Vietnam deepens, troops under fire can call upon a new form of aircraft to provide close air support, the Huey Cobra gunship. For the GIs in Vietnam, the helicopter came to dominate many aspects of their lives. in Vietnam was the first time where helicopters played a major role in most aspects of military operations. Helicopters did everything from lifting outsized objects, close support of troops, combat rescue of downed airmen, resupply of isolated fire support bases, psychological warfare, to the evacuation of casualties and transport of VIPs. But above all, the helicopter carried troops into battle. It replaced the jeeps and trucks of earlier wars and gave rise to a totally new form of warfare, air mobile operations. Large formations of helicopters carrying entire divisions of soldiers into action came to epitomize America's involvement in the Vietnam War. But assaulting a hot landing zone was certainly one of the most dangerous tasks of the war. U.S. armed forces lost nearly 5,000 helicopters in Vietnam, of which just under half were downed by the enemy. The first helicopters in Southeast Asia were not operated by the U.S., but by France. Sikorsky S-51s, Hiller H-23s, and larger Sikorsky S-55s were mainly used for evacuation of wounded soldiers, the recovery of French airmen downed in Viet Minh territory, and transport. Soon after France's defeat at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu in 1954, the United States began to funnel aid into South Vietnam. Military assistance took the form of equipment and advice. When North Vietnam declared that the political struggle with the South was now a military struggle, the American advisors in Vietnam were sucked into the ensuing war. Helicopters formed the vanguard of the rapid U.S. buildup of forces in South Vietnam. As American troops became increasingly involved in the actual fighting, the first casualties occurred. And with this deepening involvement came an ever-growing force of helicopters. The first helicopters used in Vietnam were powered by piston engines. The most widely operated type was the Sikorsky CH-34 Choctaw, 
used by the U.S. Marine Corps and South Vietnamese Air Force until well into the 1960s as their main assault helicopter. Like the French in Algeria, the Americans and South Vietnamese quickly came to appreciate the high mobility of the helicopter. Unlike jeeps or trucks, helicopters could traverse Vietnam's dense jungles, as well as mountains and riverine regions at speeds far greater than land vehicles, while at the same time carrying significant quantities of men and equipment. Apart from serving as a hauler of troops and supplies, the helicopter quickly acquired a combat role. The arrival of the U.S. Marine Corps and strength in 1965 saw a massive escalation of American forces in Vietnam. With this came a new type of mission, search and destroy. The declared enemy of the South Vietnamese and American forces was the Viet Cong guerrilla. For food and shelter, he relied on villages sympathetic to the communist cause. Search and destroy missions were designed to flush the BC from cover and cut him off from this support. Helicopters were ideal tools for this mission. They could land troops rapidly and in strength to achieve maximum surprise. While the main force of troops approached a suspect village, secondary forces would be sent ahead to outflank the VC and seal off likely escape routes. Troops searched for VC activity and interrogated villagers. Many efforts were made to win the hearts and minds of the South Vietnamese villagers, but these were largely destroyed when evidence was found of VC activity. Their homes and means of living were put to the torch. The villagers were relocated in fortified hamlets. Once again, helicopters played a part. The rapid development of rotary-winged aircraft in the 1950s allowed the U.S. Army to evolve an entirely new kind of formation in the early 1960s, making use of the helicopter's unique abilities. As the buildup of U.S. forces in Vietnam continued, the value of helicopters as a means of transporting troops into combat was becoming increasingly clear. New tactics were being developed and refined, leading to a completely new form of warfare. The Helleborn Air Assault. This integrated conventional assault of ground forces with the unprecedented mobility of helicopters. Using large numbers of helicopters, a division could make an airborne assault and seize control of large areas of territory in a very short space of time. Furthermore, the helicopter could move over or around obstacles which would normally impede personnel carriers and trucks, and at far greater speed. The air assault concept was first proved by the 11th Air Assault Division at Fort Benning, Georgia. It was considered ideal for Vietnamese operations, so the 11th, renamed 1st Cavalry Division, Air Mobile, became the first complete U.S. Army unit to arrive in country. The unit received its baptism of fire at Pleiku, 
during the battle for Eadrang Valley in late 1965. Helicopters were at their most vulnerable when approaching or exiting a contested landing zone area and were easy targets for the VC. Many were lost to ground fire. But the number was reduced by fitting the helicopter with its own suppressive fire in the form of a rapid firing machine gun. The VC and the North Vietnamese Army quickly learned of the limitations of air assault technique. Potential LZs were covered with fire or booby trapped by means of spears planted in the ground to puncture the bellies of the assaulting helicopters. Smoke laying helicopters were sometimes used to shield the actual side of the landing zone from view of enemy fire. The LZ itself, marked by colored smoke, had already been reconnoitered and cleared of booby traps and other obstacles by a Pathfinder team. However, as a final check, pilots of the assaulting helicopters always verified the color of smoke by radio, in case the Pathfinder team itself had been ambushed. As the position of the LZ was consolidated, larger transport helicopters, such as Chinooks, quickly arrived with ammunition, supplies, and artillery to set up a fire base from which further operations could be supported. Light scout helicopters such as the Bell Sioux and later the Hughes Cayuse were used to reconnoiter ahead of the ground forces. In many cases, helicopters became the only way of supporting remote hilltop fire bases. During exfiltration of troops after an assault, it was just as important to get in and out of the LZ as quickly as possible. The mounting helicopter losses to enemy fire led to the development of dedicated, heavily armed versions of the Huey helicopter. These were known as hogs to differentiate them from the lightly armed, slick troop transports. One particular anti-personnel weapon was the flechette rocket, whose warhead comprised thousands of nails. The hogs were used as mobile aerial artillery, providing heavy fire support for troops in contact with the VC. They were well suited to this fire support role. 
As organic army units directly attached to the ground troops, they could often react more quickly than Air Force fixed-wing close support aircraft. In order to avoid fratricidal contacts, colored smoke was used to indicate the location of friendly troops. But this also had the disadvantage of giving away their position to the enemy. comprised four flexibly mounted machine guns, rapid firing potted mini guns, 40 millimeter grenade launchers and 70 millimeter rockets. As well as providing close support for troops, the role of the gunship was to escort slick transports during all phases of an air assault operation. It was the task of the hog to protect the slicks during transit, soften up a landing zone prior to the arrival of the assault force, provide suppressive fire during the actual landing, and cover the withdrawal of the slicks during pickup of troops. Massive infiltration of the VC into the Mekong Delta region of southern Vietnam saw the use of Huey gunships to fight the Brown Water War. The small force of U.S. Navy UH-1Bs was actively used to support Army and Navy riverine forces in the area. In 1967, a single squadron, the Sea Wolves, was activated with over 30 hogs. Working closely with Navy patrol boats, they were used as scouts, giving early warning of ambushes, as well as providing fire support for Army air assaults. Assessments of value of the Hawk gunship showed that it greatly reduced the losses of slick transports during the most vulnerable phase of an air assault, the arrival at a hot landing zone.
was also valuable as a close support weapon. To the hard-pressed troops on the ground, the distinctive thudding of the Huey's twin rotors promised help, and its appearance made it the most welcome sight during a firefight. Due to the normal altitudes at which gunship attacks were made, nighttime operations were especially dangerous for the crews. Nevertheless, with the aid of illuminating flares, the hogs could carry out tasks such as nighttime protection of fire bases. Hueys flew particularly intense in close support, resupply, and medical evac missions by day and night, especially during the battle for the Eadrang Valley in 1965. Reconnaissance and observation were also missions where helicopters made an important contribution. An air observer describes one such operation. No one ever forgets their first mission. We were to fly our chopper over a certain area ahead of a search and clear sweep. I don't mind telling you, when that chopper took off, I had chills in the old spine, and it wasn't cold in the bird. Sometimes we flew so close to the trees, we must have scared the monkeys. Other times we flew at 1,200 feet. And then I felt like the biggest flying bullseye in Vietnam. But the pilot knew what he was doing, and soon we were over our assigned territory looking for Charlie. He's not easy to find, unless you know what you're looking for. For example, if you see a herd of cows and one farmer, that's okay. But if that herd should have 10 or 12 farmers, you're looking at a VC crowd. Along the roads, a man on a bicycle might be a peasant. Or he also might be a VC on his way to his troops. Come on down for a closer look. They'll be picking up pieces of helicopter in five provinces. The helicopter's unprecedented mobility made it the ideal tool to resupply remote outposts and fire bases. Marine Corps Sea Knights were the main helicopters used to keep the base at Khe Sanh supplied during the siege in 1968. Able to haul nine-ton payloads, the Sky Crane was the main heavy lift helicopter and the most powerful rotary-winged aircraft used in Vietnam. The CH-53 was the Marine Corps' heavy lift helicopter. First deployed in 1967, it carried over three and a half tons of cargo internally or nearly six tons slung under the fuselage. In the air assault role, it lifted 55 Marines into battle. Prior to the arrival of the CH-53, the main Marine Corps assault and transport helicopter was the CH-46 Sea Knight. Air mobile operations not only took a heavy toll of helicopters, but also proved costly in terms of lives. It was in the evacuation of wounded soldiers from combat in Vietnam that the helicopter made one of its most important contributions. Dust-off became the universal term adopted for casualty evacuation helicopters. 
At least one of these always formed part of an air assault force. Often spelling the difference between life and death, the dust-off helicopters contributed significantly to the high percentage of combat wounded who reached effective medical aid in time for their lives to be saved. The value of the dust-off was incalculable. Of the 120,000 U.S. Army soldiers wounded in action, more than 100,000 were evacuated by helicopter. They also contributed significantly to the morale of the Army's fighting men. By 1965, armed Hueys had successfully proved the gunship concept, but the addition of heavy armament had a profound effect on their performance. They were now slower than the slick transports they were meant to protect. While improved versions of Hawk gunships were being fielded, Bell hurriedly set about developing a helicopter to be used purely as a fighting machine, the world's first purpose-built gunship helicopter. Utilizing many of the proven mechanical systems of the UH-1, such as the rotors, engine, and transmission, the new prototype arrived in the form of the AH-1 Huey Cobra. Gone was the distinctive tadpole-shaped cabin used to house troops. In its place was a radically slim fuselage. The side-by-side -side cockpit was replaced by a tandem layout, with the two crew housed under a fighter-like canopy. The narrow frontal area of the fuselage not only reduced drag and made the Cobra much faster and more maneuverable than the Huey, but also reduced vulnerability by exposing a smaller area to enemy fire. The Cobra carried basically the same type of armament as the Hawk gunship, but these were fitted on purpose-built stations. Drag-reducing, electrically operated turrets under the nose housed machine guns or grenade launchers. Further guns and rocket pods were mounted under stub wings. Entering service in 1967, the Huey Cobra proved an outstanding success. Single-engine AH-1Gs were used in large numbers by U.S. Army units, while the Marine Corps operated both Gs and twin-engine AH-1JC Cobras. Although the Huey Hawk gunships were used right until the end of the war, these were largely replaced by the Cobra on assault escort and fire support duties. The Cobras generally worked in two ship pairs known as Red Teams.
Cobras were also actively used in the Riverine War. The Viet Cong used sampans on the myriad of waterways of the Delta to infiltrate men and supplies from the end of the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Cambodia into the southern provinces of the Republic of Vietnam. In the words of one gunship pilot, when we catch the gorilla on the water, he's in our element. His may be the dark and the jungle, but if he ventures into ours, we're gonna get him. carrying ammunition and beer to GIs at the front, helicopters ferried VIPs such as politicians and celebrities to the field. They also transported troops to and from rest and recreation. In February 1966, a helicopter carried South Vietnamese Prime Minister Key on his way to meet U.S. President Johnson in Hawaii. Thunder bombing offensive saw U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy tactical aircraft going into action daily against strategic targets in North Vietnam. Air crews shot down during these missions faced the bleak prospect of captivity and torture. Arrayed against them were some of the world's toughest anti-aircraft defenses from peasants armed with rifles to radar-directed heavy guns and surface-to-air missiles. For Navy airmen, once they had ditched or ejected over the Gulf of Tonkin, they stood a fairly good chance of being picked up. Prospects were worse for Air Force air crew who had to nurse their shot-up jets across North Vietnam and Laos before recovery at their bases in Thailand. Accordingly, much effort was expended by the military in rescuing downed airmen under fire. For the Air Force, this took the form of a dedicated combat search and rescue unit. Equipped with Sikorsky HH-3 Jolly Green Giant helicopters and Sky Raider piston-engined attack aircraft, the unit was based at Nakhon Phanom in northeastern Thailand for proximity to the most likely areas of rescue. Few airmen in Southeast Asia commanded as much respect as the rescue crews and the discipline of combat rescue was evolved rapidly into a highly tactical and closely coordinated art. courage of the rescue crews led to some amazing saves in the face of heavy opposition. Such was the dedication that on a few occasions more lives and aircraft were lost in the rescue than in the original incident. Aside from rescuing crews, helicopters also played a major role in recovering downed aircraft. Above all, this was the forte of the Sikorsky Sky Crane, which was credited with salvaging more than 380 aircraft valued at over $200 million.
Helicopters were also instrumental in the demining of Haiphong Harbor, a process instigated at the same time as the linebacker bombing campaign in late 1972. Clearing the harbor and its surrounding coastal waters became the responsibility of U.S. Navy Sikorsky RH-53 mine-sweeping helicopters. The final chapter came with the collapse of the South in April of 1975. Once again, helicopters played a major part, as they had done all throughout the war. As thousands of refugees fled Saigon, Huey gunships flown by South Vietnamese pilots fought the last desperate rear guard actions to protect key points from falling to regular North Vietnamese Army troops. All eyes of the world were focused on the U.S. Embassy in Saigon as emergency plans to evacuate American citizens were hurriedly put into effect. Once Tan Son Ut Airport had been overrun, helicopters were the only way out. While a naval task force standing in close to the coast prepared to receive evacuees, the authorities in Saigon had to make the heart-rending decision as to which of their loyal Vietnamese employees could be airlifted to safety. American involvement in Vietnam ended with an ignominious hellebore retreat from a war that could not be won. By April 29th, it was all over. North Vietnamese troops stormed the gates of the presidential palace and proclaimed victory for the communist cause. Evacuating U.S. Marine, Navy, CIA, and South Vietnamese helicopters were flying out to the American ships with more refugees. As each was empty, it was rolled over the side to allow more to land. In 1975, each Chinook cost a quarter of a million dollars. For the United States, Vietnam had been a tragedy especially for those it had left behind. But thanks to the helicopter, many who would have otherwise had little hope were given a new chance to make a new life.